All right, welcome back. So now we're going to look at using some of these chi-squared methods to test for an association in two-way tables. Okay, so remember what a two-way table looks like. Usually we classify them as an R by C, sometimes also called contingency tables. Right, R is the number of rows that we have, C is the number of columns that we have. Right, the intersections of our rows and columns will create what we call cells. In general, what we're going to be looking for here, so we'll have a row variable, a column variable. Right? Our null hypothesis, we'll be looking for an association between these two variables. All right, so we have to go under the assumption from the beginning there is no association. That's our null hypothesis, no association between these two variables. So on the other hand, our alternative will be that there is an association. So if you've done a goodness of fit test before, the mechanics are, are very similar. All right, so if you're already familiar with the chi-squared distribution, this should look similar. But remember, we are answering a different question here. Right? We're looking for an association between the two variables. All right, we'll actually see that there are two different types of associations we may look for. But don't worry about that for now. Let's just get the basics down then we'll get into that. Here's our condition. We always need good sampling techniques. We know that. We don't want any expecteds less than one, in other words zero, and we don't want a whole bunch of small expected counts. Alright, so these these look very similar to our goodness of fit test as well. Okay, so here's how our test statistic again we find observed counts from the data. We're going to calculate the expected on our own and again, the test statistic looks very, very similar to goodness of fit, except the difference is now I don't just have one row of cells to add up. I've got an entire table of cells. I've got R by C cells to sum up. Once I've calculated each cell is what we called contribution. All right, another difference from a goodness of fit test here is that we find our degrees of freedom a little bit differently. All right, we take our number of rows minus one multiplied by our number of columns minus one. Okay, so a lot of this may, may look fairly familiar if you've done a goodness of fit test before, but where this is a little bit trickier is finding the expected counts. Right? Observed is whatever we see in the data. Finding the expected right, is like this. So remember our null is that there is no association. Right, so all things being equal, here's how we calculate our expected. We take the marginal row total, multiply by the marginal column total, divide by the overall total. All right, so that's the easiest way to find our expecteds for a two way table. All right, so those are the basics, and we'll follow this up with an application. Thanks for.